I want to go over some information about dictionaries today. Everything you wanted to know and more. A dictionary is a single volume or multi-volume reference work containing brief explanatory entries for terms and topics related to a specific subject or field of inquiry, usually arranged alphabetically. Basically all that means is that it's a book filled with words and definitions of those words. Um, Alexander Thoreau called dictionaries definitionaries because that's mainly what they contain. So, word lists were common in ancient Greece and Rome, but it wasn't until the Middle Ages that dictionaries really took off. In the Middle Ages, authors began inserting glosses into texts, either at the end of the book or in the margin. And the purpose of these glosses were to provide tra translations of Latin words or definitions. Dictionaries were initially arranged by subject rather than in alphabetical order because scholarship at that time favored subjects being grouped together. Uh, you can still see this today in Dewey Decimal and the Library of Congress classification schemes. So the sub subjects are grouped together rather than everything being in alphabetical order. Uh, it wasn't until around the year 1600 that dictionaries began to be alphabetized. There are two major types of dictionaries, prescriptive dictionaries and descriptive dictionaries. Prescriptive dictionaries give definitions and show how the language should be used. So proponents of prescriptive dictionaries say that dictionaries should set standards, support traditional usage, and prevent the contamination of language by slang and jargon. Descriptive dictionaries show how the language is actually used. And proponents of descriptive dictionaries say that, well, language is always changing and dictionaries should therefore reflect those changes. Most of the dictionaries that we see and use today are descriptive dictionaries. There aren't, as, there aren't nearly as many prescriptive dictionaries as there used to be. Most of what we see is descriptive. In addition to the type of general dictionary that we're all familiar with, there are many kinds of specialized dictionaries. There are subject, di subject dictionaries that define words particular to a specific dif discipline. For example, the APA Dictionary of Psychology defines terms frequently used in psychology. There are thesauri, which are not quite like common dictionaries which provide definitions. Thesauri compile synonyms of words, so words that have the same or similar meanings. A dictionary of quotations lists popular quotations, usually by author. However, you can look subjects up in the index and find relevant quotations. There are dictionaries that are just filled with slang words and their definitions. And there are also rhyming dictionaries, which list words that rhyme with other words. You'll get to see examples of all these types of dictionaries a little bit later on. The primary uses of dictionaries are as followed to find definitions of words or phrases, to get proper pronunciation of specific words, to determine the proper usage of a word or phrase, to find the etymology or history of a word, to figure out a word's spelling, to learn about the history or definition of specific root words, to find synonyms, and my primary dictionary usage, which is to solve crossword puzzles. When you're evaluating dictionaries, you want to make sure to look at the publisher and editor's authority. Anyone can slap Webster's on a dictionary. The name isn't trademark, so make sure that the publisher of your Webster's dictionary is reputable. You also want to look at the scope statement. What does this source promise to give you? You can usually find the scope statement in the preface or about a section. It'll explain what the source contains and it will tell you about the primary spelling. Look at the entries themselves. Are there usage notes? Does the dictionary contain slang? Does it note its use as such? Is the modern meaning of a word noted? Can you see primary uses of a word along with its variations? A good thing to look for in a dictionary is the use of the word itself in the definition. If the dictionary uses the word itself in the definition, it is probably not an extremely helpful dictionary. You want to look and make sure that there's a pronunciation guide for each word. And you'll also want to check out alphabetization. There is more than one way to alphabetize, believe it or not. 
You can alphabetize word by word. In that case, battle royale would come before battlement or letter by letter. So battlement in that case will come before battle royale. <clears throat> so those are all things that you really want to look for when you're looking at dictionaries. One quick way to evaluate a dictionary would be to pick a few words that you're really familiar with and browse for them. Look for the specific features that are available in each of the different dictionaries. Look at the pronunciation, the definitions, the extra added entries that you might get. Other things that you want to consider when evaluating dictionaries are the currency of the dictionary. Uh, is the language up to date or is it old fashioned? How much does the resource cost? If it's expensive, you purchase it and it isn't used, you're going to lose money. And with our limited budgets, we want to save as much money and make our money last as much as we can. You'll want to consider whether or not to purchase a dictionary in print or electronic format. A lot of print dictionaries today come with access to electronic or some sort of online version. Uh, you should consider the comprehensiveness of the dictionary. Does it cover the scope of the English language or does it just focus on standard English? Is it maybe talking about regionalisms? Like is it only common words used in Appalachia? Something like that. Especially when you're looking at electronic dictionaries, you want to check out any value-added features like pictures, links to longer articles and encyclopedias or on the web, audio pronunciation, those kinds of things. If a, if a dictionary doesn't have these value-added features on its electronic version, I would say it would be best to go with the print version. So here are just a few examples of general dictionaries, Merriam-Webster, which is available in print or online. Dictionary.com, which is a dictionary aggregator, meaning it brings together definitions from several different dictionary sources. Wiktionary, which is a compile, compile, compilation of volunteer contributions. The Oxford English Dictionary, or the OED, which is a multi-volume work. And the Random House Unabridged Dictionary, also in print. So now we're going to look at some different dictionary examples and these are all going to be print sources. So this is from the print edition of the Merriam-Webster Collegiate Dictionary. You can see that it has guide words at the top which tell you the first word on the page and the last word on the page. So the first word on the page is Rabdomancer and the last word is Rhizosphere. Each entry is in bold followed by a pronunciation guide. Then you can see the word history. So if you look at that first word, rheumatism, in this case, it is from the Greek. Then you have your definition, pretty standard dictionary. Uh, here's an entry from the OED, or the Oxford English Dictionary, which is one of my favorite dictionaries. So this is set up a little differently than the Merriam-Webster. The word is present in bold. Then you have a pronunciation guide. After that, the word origin, in this case non plus, is from the French. Then you have the definition. And after the definition, there are several different examples of the word used historically. So it traces the development of the word in the English language. So this is one of the main features which makes the Oxford English Dictionary so special and so sought after. Uh, this is from the Firefly Visual Dictionary. I think it is really super cool. It's not in traditional alphabetical order, but it is grouped by subject. So here we have a page that gives examples of marine mammals. You have a, a word and then a picture along with the word. So there's no formal definition written out, but you're able to see what that word is referring to. Uh, visual dictionaries are really helpful, helpful for students and for young children. This is a specialized dictionary, a specialized subject dictionary. Gumshoe, a dictionary of fictional detectives compiled by Mitzi Brunsdale, a Mayville State professor. So here you can see the entry, which is a name of a fictional detective. We have Case Scarpetta, along with information about the detective and a narrative. So the entry also contains inf information about the novels that the detective has appeared in and other works. And then it has sources that were cited within the entry. So this is a little bit different than what we're used to looking at, but 
it's still considered to be a dictionary. Another specialized dictionary is the language dictionary. So the language dictionary usually provides translations of specific words. Most language dictionaries translate in both directions. So in this case, this the Colin Robert French English Dictionary translates from French to English and from English to French. You can see that this is set up similarly to a general dictionary. However, instead of featuring a definition, the language dictionary simply has the equivalent word in the other language. You can see here that CAD has the English pronunciation guide, but not the French. But you could look up goujat, maltro, or mufle on the French to English side to get the pronunciation guide for the French equivalent. Uh, here is a typical thesaurus entry. These are from, this is from Roger's thesaurus, which is by far the most commonly used thesaurus. You can see that the words are given in bold print, a definition is given in italics, and then the synonyms are listed. So here we have panache, which means a person's flamboyant spirit, and its synonyms include brio, charisma, dash, elan, flair, flamboyance, flourish, style, swagger, verve, and vigor. It also has a cross-reference to concept on page 411. Uh, in the Oxford Dictionary of Quotations, you can see that this is also set up differently than a standard dictionary. Um, the quotations are organized by author. So here we have quotations by Oscar Wilde. So all of the quotations that follow are by Oscar Wilde. A brief description is given of who Wilde was and then the quotations are listed. So they're, And they're listed in order by the title and where they appeared. And the title they're off bleh, obviously alphabetized. So you see the Canterville Ghost and then several quotations from The Importance of Being Earnest. The new Partridge Dictionary of Slang is particularly cool. So here's an example of a slang dictionary entry. The entry is in bold, like all of the other entries that we've seen, followed by a definition of the phrase. It has a usage note. In this case, it's described as offensive because it's culture specific and stereotypical. And then there are several examples of the slang phrase used in works of literature. So that, like the Oxford English Dictionary, is going to give you a little bit of a history of the word, a phrase, where it came from, how its usage has evolved. The Woods Unabridged Rhyming Dictionary is set up a little bit closer to the thesaurus than it is to a typical dictionary. So in the case of this rhyming dictionary, ending sounds are listed and then rhyming words follow in alphabetical order. So you can see aided at the bottom and they give an example that says abbreviated is the word and then there are all of the all different words that rhyme are listed below. Online rhyming dictionaries are a little bit easier to use than print online or print rhyming dictionaries. Um, online di rhyming dictionaries will allow you to type in the word that you want to rhyme and then will bring back results in alphabetical order and a lot of them will bring back results separated by syllable so it will give you words with three syllables, words with two syllables, words with four syllables all separated out. The last dictionary that we're going to look at is the abbreviations dictionary. The entries here are very short. The abbreviation is listed and then the full phrase is written out. What that abbreviation stands for. So I've put a more extensive list of dictionary resources up on the Moodle page for this week. You'll probably want to consult that once you start working on your sample reference questions. If you have any other questions about dictionaries, please post them on the forum and good luck.